Hello, Warwick. Hello, Nicole. Hello, listeners. Hi, listeners. Hey, Warwick. What? What do you call Santa when he stops moving? <laughs> no. Santa pause. Welcome to the Tradies and Business Podcast with your hosts, Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Divert your phone and grab a brew as Waz and Nick unpack tips, tales, secrets and stuff-ups from guests both inside and outside your trade, helping educate and inspire you to break the cycle of gut-busting and money stress and create a true trade business. Hi listeners, it's that time of year. I've just given you the best segue ever. I know. <laughs> that was a... That was a anyway... Is it a segue if it's really, really obvious? Or is it only a segue if it's kind of a bit hidden and mysterial? Mysterial? Well, our <laughs> listeners don't know what we're going to talk about. So they're scratching their heads thinking, what is Warwick on about this morning? Mr. Oh, what's Warwick on about? Okay, right. At least I'm that's, not making up words. <laughs> that's the game we're playing today. Hi, listeners. We're talking about Santa. Christmas. Pause. Oh, the pause. Hello. Christmas pause. There's a segue within that a segue. What was the segue? Oh, the pause. I thought it was the just pause. the blunt Christmas thing. <laughs> the segue was taking the opportunity to pause now in, well, most of you will be listening to this in September, some of you in October, before we all go absolutely nuts and lose our mind. Now's the Got time it. to pause and make a plan. Ready for Christmas. Thanks for explaining it to me like I'm oh, seven. No. <laughs> oh, dear. Anywho, <laughs> so we're not talking about Christmas at all, although we are. We're talking about how stressful that time of year is if you don't sort your bananas out at this time of year. Hmm. It's, it's, uh, and I said this just quickly before we hit record, the old Christmas club, um, what was the company that did that? Crisco, Crisco, Crisco. they still Crisco. do. Their <laughs> ads are about to start churning through <laughs> television. Uh, and I always look at that and I think, wow, do, do you really have to like put money aside so you can do the Christmas dinner thing starting in September or October? I mean, can't you... Can't you plan that far ahead yourself? And I think for a lot of people, they're just so busy and distracted that that actually helps them create the outcome and go, oh, wow, look at that, Christmas time. And I've already got it all sorted because I've been putting, you know, $17 a week away to my Christmas club thingy. Not I think we, we ignore how stressful Christmas is until we're in it again. Yeah. I feel like the the advantage of something like Crisco or Christmas Club is we're hitting we're being hit with that right in the stressful busy period when we've reawoken reawakened our mind and realized holy crap this time of year is nuts. Yeah. Um, and so I'm going to plan for it starting right now December the year before. And we don't do <laughs> that in business unfortunately. We we no. vow and declare every year I'm going to do it better next year. I'll do it better next year. And I know from my own experience, this is probably the first Christmas ever that uh, certainly in my business entities, I've planned super well for it this year, but it's taken me, I don't know, 20 odd years of being in business to realize that I really need to start planning for this back in August mm. rather than uh, December 21st. When <laughs> I realized I can't get through the body of work. I thought I could. Yeah. And I suppose, listeners, there are always many, many factors that lead to these sorts of outcomes. If you've ever had a crappy Christmas or been stressed at Christmas time in your trade business, thinking, how are we going to pay for this? How are we going to get the work done? How are we going to be able to take a break because there's too much work to do or there's not enough money to take a break? I'm starting to sound like Jimmy Rees and he's yeah, out thing. <laughs> That's because it's accurate and it's true. <laughs> These are all the things we, we check out as a trade business owner when it comes to Christmas. All of that. How do I say no? How do I, what am I meant to do about team? Are we going to yeah. work on an emergency basis? Are we taking time off? When do I let them know that we're having two weeks off at Christmas? All of that stuff. We, we tend not to think about it. And so it becomes the, the check register in the middle of December when we realize, holy mm. crap, how are we here already? 
12th of December and you're, you're crapping your DAX because mm. I can't handle it all. And then you end up with another crappy Christmas um, or certainly not the one that you wanted or that you, you wished for your family perhaps. Mm. And it's like so many things. The problems aren't about Christmas. The problems start even before now, if you're listening to this in September or October-ish, uh, as we we send this episode live, the problems start last Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> they started in January or February, and certainly by by e- the time Easter rolls around, if I can get my words out today, uh, if you haven't actually got your eye on the ball, those um, mistakes or gaps that you've got in your business and your and your money stuff around Easter time, they're going to show up as a Christmas cluster. So, uh, <laughs> My favorite word. if you don't want one of those at Christmas, um, then there's still some things you can do now. And, and I guess, you know, a bit of doom and gloom and yes, okay, we get it. Christmas, stressy, crazy times, blah, blah. There are still some things that you can do now um, in early October. So that December is not a write-off and January is not a awful hangover of, well, that was crap, let's not do that again. Mm-hmm. You can certainly make some impact. And um, I think it starts with actually acknowledging that you need to change what you're doing right now if you want Christmas to look different. I mean, that's probably a bit of a duh statement from me, Coxie. Um, mm-hmm. But that's one of the biggest blockages, I think, is... We just stick our heads down, not just not necessarily in the sand. We just we're busy. You and mm. I were talking about this this morning um, in our catch up before we recorded today, and people are really busy, and so we just get stuck on this. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. But you've got to change something about how mm. you're doing things. Otherwise, you're just going to perpetuate what happened last year and the seven years before that. Yeah, I one of the hardest things for me in our job is the people that come to us at the end of their tether or um, almost too late. And we tend to see a lot of those late January, early February, and sometimes even into March where uh, we've arrived at the destination we set for ourselves back in September the year before. And that destination was one of um, no real fixed address, I guess. We don't know where we're going. We haven't made a plan. We don't understand what we need the bank balance to look like. And there's often that hangover effect, particularly for the, well, I think all trades. And we see it really heavily impact those trades where they have extended payment terms, like landscapers, builders, mm. um, trades that are doing jobs over an extended period of time because payment terms are different over Christmas than they are any other time of year because the industry shuts down for two to three weeks. And so we perhaps haven't thought mindfully around what we need to get set, what we need to complete or prioritise completing prior to the break to ensure we're paid, et cetera, until it's maybe too late. And then when they arrive uh, on the doorstep, the virtual doorstep that we have here at Traders and Business, at the uh, start of next year, stressed, exhausted, fatigued, didn't get a good break because they were so worried about money or they were worried about team or they had to continue to work over the Christmas period because it was the only way to increase their cash flow or keep the cash flowing instead of disappearing. Um, often for them, it's it's not completely disastrous, but it can be really hard to rein that back in quickly. And so um, a lot of the strategies we talk about here at Traders and Business are around creating that control and the roadmap before you hit the super busy time. And there's no denying that right now, September, October are, all re- are already nuts. It's a crazy year anyway. And we've got weather, um, staff shortages, material increases and shortages, all impacting what our workflow looks like. Would it hurt any business owner to take a bit of time out of their day right now to start to make a plan mm-hmm. so they don't fall into that hole that we so often see in the first quarter of the new year? Yeah, and it's boring, it's sometimes confusing, I think, maybe overwhelming to come up with a plan. Mm. And um, (laughs) you can't change your trajectory if you don't do some sort of um, thinking about, well, where are we 
now? Where do we want to be? What are we doing now that's actually contributing to those outcomes? Mm. And what could we change? Even something as simple as taking time now to think about, okay, well, are we shutting down at Christmas? Are we staying open for emergencies? Are we telling clients that we're going to keep con- working on their jobs if you know, you're doing construction type work in landscaping or building or whatever it might be and making some of those decisions now mm. because a lot of the time we arrive at the 10th or the 17th of December or whatever and we haven't given it any thought and so a lot of the mental stress comes from having to solve those problems mm. along with everything else that's going on and that's when it just becomes so overwhelming and stressful that you make snap decisions mm. and Sometimes we regret those. Sometimes mm. they're made in the heat of battle instead of, oh my gosh, I wish I'd thought about this a month ago. And if you've ever said that to yourself at Christmas time, I wish I'd thought about this a month ago. I wish I'd done something about this six weeks ago. That's now. Yeah. That, that's now. So any of those things that have ever crossed your mind, even if it's not Christmas time, maybe you got to Easter, maybe you got to your your birthday or your wedding anniversary or whatever it is, if you're the, the sort of person that... You know, the day before um, a loved one's uh, birthday or, you know, big event, it's like, oh, my gosh, it's tomorrow. And you're posting on Facebook asking friends, what should I buy them? <laughs> if, if that's you, then perhaps take half an hour out now and jot down a list of some of the questions or the problems that usually crop up for you around Christmas time in your trade business and see if you can't actually start coming up with some answers to mm-hmm. some of those now. Hey, tradies in business, was here. Sorry to interrupt your listening pleasure. I'm joined by Coxie, of course. <laughs> Hello. You may not know this, tradie or tradie wife or whoever you are listening to this program, but we're business coaches. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh, that feels I weird know. to say. but we do actually work with people just like you to solve a bunch of problems and we have this fantastic program called the tradiepreneur program and that's how we do it and we do it with a wonderful community of trade business owners who are all trying to fix or improve or change things to progress things like getting behind on quoting coxie feeling overwhelmed behind on your invoicing feeling really stressed or frustrated about the money stuff. Sometimes you can pay the bills. Sometimes you can't. What about staff? Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, staff. Trying to get them to do what you want them to do. If you can even find them in the first place. Uh, There's so many struggles. And we've seen clients tackle these things in their trade businesses in a quite a short space of time, to be honest, Mm -hmm. during the program and recruit staff at a time where everybody was saying you can't get good staff. Mm -hmm. improve their quality from their team, collect their debts much more quickly. We have sessions. Tips. Yes. Getting tips. Yes. So uh, people rounding up, customers rounding up the invoice by hundreds of dollars Mm -hmm. because they're so happy with the sales process and the experience of dealing with the trade business owner and their team. So some amazing stories from our clients, but you know, as they say in the, in the commercials, don't take it from us. Uh, (laughs) Hear what some of our clients have to say. Coming into Christmas, we are not worried about money. We've got enough money in the bank to pay everybody's leave. There's work booked in for the new year. And for the first time in a long time, we'll be having three weeks off and not worrying about the business. That's probably the biggest win of all. Using the cash flow forecast, I've been able to look into the future and see where I'm going to be situated financially. And it's actually started to have a huge bearing on whether or not I make purchases. By far, one of the best things about working with Nick and Woz are the other businesses that are working alongside them. It is amazing how empowering it is to be working alongside like-minded people who have similar goals, similar troubles. We can all relate to each other and everybody helps everybody out by figuring out problems with you that they may have faced previously. Everybody has solutions and constructive feedback and it's an incredibly friendly, warm, welcoming environment, not threatening at all. From every job, I know that I will get a sustainable wage that's industry leading. I can have at least 10 to 20% profit 
and I can play taxes, super, all of that, and I do not have to question whether or not I can because of the way that it's been built, and that is thanks to traders and business and what they've taught me and what I've learned. So there you go. There's some real people. We did not pay them to say those things. <laughs> and I think that sounds a lot better than Coxie and I reading them out. We really would love for you to check out more about how you could take your trade business to where you would like it to be. Surely you have a vision of what things could be like or what you wish they were like on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. um, whether that is reducing stress or actually making more money. Maybe it's spending more time with the family, taking more holidays, having the choice mm. that you really wanted when you started your business instead of this beast that seems to be there for many of you listening to this program. So if you want to find out more about how we do this through the Tradepreneur program. Coxie's going to tell you all about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually not. I'm going to be really secretive and uh, keep all of our magic up our sleeves. What I would like you to do, though, is head on over to tradiesandbusiness.com.au. You can learn all about us, why we do what we do, and how you can work with us, what that actually looks like. There's a whole bunch of free stuff there for you to download, uh, lots of options. We've always got new stuff going up onto the website and a great place for you to learn a whole bunch more about how you can work with us. You can even book a 15-minute chat. For free. For free. That's how abundant we are. So head over to the website, uh, check it out, book a chat with us, and we'd love to find out if you'd be a great fit for the Tradiepreneur community and start hanging out with some of those people that you just heard from. <laughs> I think one of the best things we can decide right now while it's a little calmer um, is what we're going to say no to. Mm. What will we say no to to provide us with the time and space to say yes to the things that will matter? And the things that will matter will be the stuff that, that gives you the right money at the right time, the right kind of work, the less stress rolling into Christmas. Perhaps it allows you a bit of time to go and watch Christmas concerts for the kids, not being stuck, you know, on a roof at 4.30 in the afternoon when the kids are just walking in to do their Christmas concert. Or maybe it's uh, providing you the opportunity to take that downtime uh, for a week or two over the Christmas break. What What can we say no to starting now? that allows us that time and space to have the kind of Christmas and New Year that we would like to have. What I would like for Christmas and New Year is different to your work and vice versa. Um, and therefore, it's super important that we make these decisions for ourselves before others start making them for us. And what I mean by that is if we don't consciously decide what we're going to say no to, then the builders that we're subcontracting to or the clients that we're working for will make those decisions for us their decisions will be more important than our own and drive our outcome instead of us being in the driver's seat and making the choice right now. So a simple mm. list of what you're comfortable or happy to say no to is a great place to start in terms of then driving a bigger conversation around, well, what do I need to do to find that control I would like to have for this Christmas period? Mm. Another one that I'm going to throw in here, Coxie, is really ugly and distasteful and most business owners struggle with this stuff at the best of times so at the worst of times when Christmas is upon you or even now starting to think about it forecasting mm -hmm. or looking ahead the good old crystal ball mm -hmm. is the last thing a lot of people want to do at the moment mm -hmm. and in some cases looking at it can feel quite depressing and, and stressful to have a look at, okay, well, what work have we got coming in? What money have we got coming in? And what money have we got going out? That's a really yuck thing to be doing in many businesses. Mm -hmm. The paradox of that, though, and the other side of the double-edged sword is that if you, <laughs> if you don't look at it, it's still going to bite you on the bum, whether you look at it or not. Yeah. So looking at it at least gives you some opportunity to take a little bit of control back. And a bit like Coxie was saying with you know what you say no to, other people will decide what your Christmas looks like if you mm -hmm. don't say no to things. It's the same way if you don't actually just do a basic, it can be on a piece of paper with a pen. You know, open up zero or whatever you've got or if you keep your jobs in a spreadsheet or maybe you just have them in a book or a folder or whatever your system is you still have a system, uh, is just list out, okay, well, what have we got coming in? What do we think we're going to collect? What's going to go out? What bills have we got coming up? What materials have to be paid for? And just do a quick assessment of 
what does our financial situation actually look like coming into December? Because you could still make some change to that now that would give you enough breathing space for maybe taking four or five days off instead mm -hmm. of none. Or taking the same four or five days off that you do and having a little more comfort around the fact that you can afford to buy a box of fancy beer and a bottle of bubbles for the, for the wife or, you know, take the kids mountain biking or whatever the heck it is that you want to do um, without having that constant awful stress of, oh my gosh, we can't afford this. We've got no money. How are we going to pay for this? I'll put this on the credit card and then I don't know what the heck I'm going to do after that. And all it takes is, you know, half an hour mm. now, half an hour. So just, you know, don't spend half an hour watching um, reels or TikTok or whatever it is this week. That's it. Just trim your social media video by half an hour this week or your favorite Netflix show, or whatever the heck it is that seems to soak up time. Just mindfully cut a bit of that, reinvest it into having a quick look at your numbers and then maybe you can push some bills out. Maybe you can make some deals with suppliers. Maybe you can go on a payment plan. Um, maybe you can lean on some of your outstanding invoices that people haven't paid and make sure you ask them to pay now before they get themselves in financial strife coming into Christmas. And there's that knock-on effect because all the other businesses that you are dealing with or the consumers that you're dealing with, they have these same troubles. And so come Christmas time, they'll be not paying their bills, which buggers up your Christmas. But if you keep it tight now, then you can enjoy... The, the rewards from that in six or eight weeks' time. It can be uncomfortable looking at money. I'm in, my, in a previous life, I've been a classic one, particularly coming into Christmas, to not look at it or to be convinced that I'm busy, there must be plenty of money in the bank or the bank balance looks okay today and not have considered what needs to go out before we get to that Christmas time. And I encourage you, you're going to face discomfort one way or the other. If you're not looking, you're bound to find discomfort early next year when you no longer have choice or you can sit through a little bit of discomfort now where you still have choice, where you can make it a different choice around who you pay when or uh, making a deal with your suppliers or running your builders tight because you're working with builders. Regardless of what that looks like, you have the opportunity to make a choice now that impacts your future or land in your future and no longer have a choice. I know which one I'd prefer as tough as it might be. And as usual, we have maybe not a full solution, but an opportunity for you to join us uh, for a couple of sessions next week. We've got four sessions next week running from 5 to 5.30. They're half-hour sessions. Isn't that a coincidence? We're talking about half-hour blocks of time. Uh, 5 to 5.30 in the afternoon, uh, we are running a webinar series to get ready for Christmas to help you understand what you need to be looking at, to help you understand what needs to be prioritized, to clear some of the head trash so that you can make the decisions you need to make now with confidence and assurity to move your business into the position you'd like it to be to achieve some of those Christmas goals for you and your family because it's not too late. We still have plenty of time to act on some of the things and strategies and, and tips and tricks and techniques that we're going to give you next week to help you drive that result that you are all looking for in one form or another. Some of you want to go on holidays. Some of you will want the clarity and the understanding of what emergency work might look like. Um, some of you just want to have a lovely Christmas at home where you're not having to worry about how much the ham costs this year. Regardless of what that looks like for you, four sessions next week, half an hour only um, via Zoom. It's webinars, so you don't even need to get dressed up. We won't get to see you. You get to see us. We'll do the dressing up bit for you. Uh, and you can come along. There's some great information. It's completely free. All you need to do is head on over to the website uh, and there's pop-up there mm -hmm. uh, where you can register or you can head on over to any of our social channels where you will be able to find more information as well. You can even jump on uh, from your mobile device in the ute or the van. Uh, you don't have to be sitting at home to be able to do it. Obviously, the more <laughs> focus and attention you give it, the more you're going to get out of it. Uh, but don't let, uh, you know, a lack of time in the office be an excuse for not learning at least something. It is only 30 minutes. 
and even if you just listen in, um, you're going to pick up some tips and perhaps even a bit of motivation and a few different ideas around mm. how you could make some of those changes so that you don't repeat the last seven Christmases. Um, so as Coxie said, head over to the website. <clears throat> it's free. You do need to register to get the link, um, but that's super easy and uh, it works on mobile as well. So uh, we'd love to see you in our boot camp, it's called, Business Boot Camp, Get Your Business Ready for Christmas. So um, I guess so you can actually have a Christmas this year. And if you've already got a decent Christmas planned, uh, jump on in because perhaps you can make it even better. Mm. Anyway, uh, go register for that. I hope you've got some uh, inspo from today's episode. Uh, don't leave it till December, listeners. Do something about Christmas now. It's much easier now than uh, leaving it till the last minute when pretty much you're stuck. You get what you get. And as my daughter says, you don't get upset. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. Uru. You've been listening to the Tradies and Business Podcast with Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Find out more about today's guest, tools for your trade business and other cool stuff at tradiesandbusiness.com.au.